to that. And the first talk is uh, efficient defenses against adversarial examples for deep neural networks. And uh, the talk will be given by Valentina Zantedeschi and Irina Nicolai. Uh, thank you for the introduction. I will follow up on that uh, by saying that uh, Valentina is a third year uh, PhD student uh, working, uh, doing her research in machine learning at the University of uh, Jean Monnet in Saint Etienne. Uh, this summer she did her internship with us in IBM Research in, uh, in Dublin and now we will present the, the project that we, we did together. So first of all, I think what you are most used to see uh, in your field is uh, how machine learning can be applied to solve uh, different security uh, tasks. And uh, this has proven some success on some tasks and that has created some controversies on others uh, because maybe people were expecting great performance, which was not uh, met. Uh, but in this talk, we'll be doing things the other way around. That is, we will be speaking about some security problems of uh, machine learning. So first of all, some, um, some generalities, uh, just to set the problem. Uh, in machine learning, what we are trying to obtain are prediction models. Um, these models are based on, uh, on data and they are obtained through a process of training, which is um, basically you provide to your model uh, past data, consider in this case images, and with the, the expected output that you would like your prediction uh, model to, to offer. And based on this training process, what you get in the end is a prediction model, which is able to, to provide, hopefully, the correct answer uh, whenever you give it new, um, new data. Now, um, it has been found out in the recent years that uh, machine learning um, algorithms in general have a fundamental problem. Uh, that is, once you've overcome the training step and you are using the model in practice, uh, what happens is that um, an attacker can um, use some uh, noisy inputs to make your, pro your model fail in practice. So consider this example. You have um, the picture of a panda which is classified correctly with a high degree of confidence, 84%. Now, look at the image in the right. Uh, I would say that you cannot say that this is not exactly the same image as the original one, but this one will be misclassified um, as a monkey with, again, pretty high degree of confidence. Now, what changed between the two of them is the fact that this noise has been added to the image. Again, you cannot see this, but it will completely make the, the model fail. And in some cases, we go from uh, almost close to 100% uh, correct responses from the prediction model almost close to 0%. Now, um, what I would like for you to, to notice is that uh, this noise that is added in the middle in order to make models fail is not random noise. Um, prediction models are generally pretty robust to random noise, uh, but this noise here has been crafted especially to make the model fail. Now, why is this important? Uh, there are many types of applications that are during, uh, currently in, uh, in the process of being developed and that will be uh, used in the following uh, years. So if you consider self-driving cars, uh, here we have a, a task of image segmentation uh, where we would like to recognize to some extent uh, to which class the pixels in an image um, are, part of, are part of. And here you have the, the camera that is on top of a, of a car. Again, you cannot pretty much tell the difference between the two images, but the, the system, uh, when adding the noise, will fail to recognize the pedestrians. Of course, I do not have to explain what are the implications of a car not slowing down when pedestrians are, are involved. Um, in the same way, self-driving cars can have the problem of not, of not recognizing correctly um, road signs. So again, if uh, the car doesn't stop where a stop sign um, is involved, uh, there is some liability there. Now, another example, um, and this was published uh, recently in uh, CCS, um, they have built an end-to-end -end system for fooling all these personal assistants uh, with some commands that are completely inaudible uh, to humans. And uh, again, this works uh, pretty well, um, and they manage to do the assistant do whatever they want. So, 
in order to understand why uh, there, these uh, machine learning models are affected by these vulnerabilities, uh, we're going to need to uh, go into the details of the structure and how the machine learning models work. We are going to focus on deep learning models that are just a subset of machine learning models. They are pretty known because of their performances, for instance, in the image recognition task. Um, but also because of their complexity, uh, they're probably most vulnerable to um, adversarial attacks. So let's first demystif demystify their magical powers. Um, classical neural networks consist of uh, neurons interconnected to each other and grouped by layers. So um, each neuron represents a function of the previous values coming from the previous neurons of the previous layer. Okay. So at training, at the training step, what we actually learn is all the weights of these arrows that are connecting <coughs> the neurons of a layer to uh, the neurons of the next one. Also, all these values, uh, the, uh, the values are coming out uh, from a neuron are passed through an activation function in order to add some nonlinearities, etc. So what we learn at training is how to combine all the internal uh, functions in order to get the expected output from the given input. Um, at prediction phase, what happens is that we present this, uh, for instance, this image to the network, and the values are propagated from the uh, input layer here through the network using the weights that we just learned in a previous phase, and we'll get an output here. Here, um, the neuron uh, corresponding to, um, each neuron here corresponds to a class, and we retain as the prediction uh, class, the predicted class, the neuron with the highest score. In this case, the giant panda. Um, so what happened when we uh, present an adversarial uh, image, like in this case, to, uh, to the network. Um, here we can see that there is no um, important difference between this image and the original one. So we are expecting the, the network, the model, to react the same way, to have the same prediction. But in this case, we have uh, a monkey prediction. This is because even if the uh, perturbation at, in the input layer is pretty small, it's not detectable visually, um, um, the perturbation at the end in the final layer is much bigger. This is because this difference is amplified through the network because of the uh, discrimination of internal functions that uh, I told you about before. So as Irina said before, not any perturbation in the input layer will result in a big perturbation in the uh, output layer. We need to craft this uh, perturbation in a particular way. Let's see why we need that. We, don't, we can't just apply any uh, distortion to the image in order to have a possible attack. We just choose um, an oversimplified illustration. We are, we are working in a 2D space with, we rep in which we represented the uh, data distribution of two possible classes, the yellow and the orange one. So the true distribution of the data is correspond to the, these areas col colored by the uh, uh, the yellow and the orange. Uh, the crosses correspond to the images that we use for training. And the red line that we see here is a possible um, decision boundary that we have, uh, have learned during the training phase. So we can see, um, so this decision boundary means that whatever is above that, that line will be predicted as the yellow class for the model. And whatever is below it will be, it will be uh, predicted as the orange class. So as you can see here, there is a discrepancy between what is learned, what is predicted by the model, and the true distribution of the data. And in this region here is where, we'll have, uh, where we have all our troubles. In, as a matter of fact, the adversarial examples occur in this area, and a possible attacker would, would try to uh, modify one of these uh, the crosses here in order to make, uh, make them grow uh, towards and across the uh, prediction uh, boundary so that the model will be fooled on that example. All these examples here will be uh, predicted as yellow class, but they are actually from the orange class. But, uh, so what an attacker will try to do is to apply the uh, smallest perturbation in order to make these, um, in order to find these regions 
and also to make the adversarial not detectable uh, visually in the, in the case of the images or also statistically. Um, so this is why we couldn't just apply any random transformation, for instance, to this point. Because if you take any random random transformation, first we are not sure that the resulting image will uh, lie uh, in this region of the space. Maybe it would still be inside the, um, in the, on the right side of the decision boundary. Um, and also, we, we will not be sure to have the shorter, uh, the, the smallest perturbation. And so we'll result with um, detectable adversarial uh, examples. Um, so um, the problem at the end uh, boils down to uh, find an X prime, the adversarial example, that is pretty close to the original one, X, um, but that uh, is able to fool the model to have a different output at the prediction. In the literature, there are different attacks, different approximations of this uh, original problem. Um, the first two that you can see here in the table are fixed budget uh, attacks. Um, they are the fastest and they are pretty uh, effective. The second one just differs from the first one because at, before applying in the first method, we just um, apply small uh, perturbation in a random direction around the inputs. Um, and it has been shown to be um, stronger than the first uh, attack. The last three attacks that we see here um, um, are stronger because they allow to find smaller perturbations of the inputs. So they are much more difficult to, uh, uh, to detect. Um, but also they're of course more computationally expensive. But let's see how we, we could defend from uh, these attacks. What we'd like to do is, okay, if the problem is that we have these kind of regions in the input space that are underrepresented, uh, um, why not just um, learn our model using uh, a bigger data set, using a, a data set that will be the sum of the original examples and the, um, the adversarial examples crafted using the learned model. So, the adversarial, this procedure, this defense procedure called adversarial training, consists in training first um, a first model that we correspond to this, uh, to the red line we saw, we saw before, um, using the original data set, craft uh, some adversarial examples using that model, and then retrain the model on the, uh, on a augmented data set. So at the end, we'll try to correct the decision boundary have a better one. But of course, um, this kind of defenses cannot work in practice uh, every time because we will always have new regions uh, that are underrepresented by the uh, training um, set. Maybe we cannot see it here in a 2D illustration, but we usually use, uh, we usually have uh, to deal with mm, bigger spaces, much more dimensions. If you think of any picture, uh, who has um, uh, much more pixels than, pixels than two. Um, other defenses, so these the first two defenses that I just described are based on this principle, train the model, uh, craft adversaries, retrain the model on a um, bigger data set. But then there are other defenses that consist in pre-processing the, uh, for instance, the inputs that are presented to the model before training and also before every prediction phase. Uh, for instance, by squeezing the input domain or applying some transformation to the, uh, to the pictures. And also we can pre-process the outputs, the expected outputs that we, are used, um, that we use for, for training the model. Um, now that uh, we have the entire background and we see uh, the state of the art for the attacks and um, for the defenses, I can uh, talk about our uh, methods that we propose to make that we propose, sorry, that we propose to make um, uh, the model more robust to, to this kind of attack. Um, so we tackled two different problems. The, the, the problem that we just saw that we cannot really uh, discover um, all the adversarial directions uh, in the space, in the input space, and also the, this cumulative effect that, uh, is, um, that it happens in the neural networks. 
Um, so our first contribution is to say, instead of um, uh, learning our model on the original training set, why not try to learn it with uh, an augmented data set uh, that uh, we contain also some noisy images. Okay? Uh, what we do is to uh, draw uh, some random perturbations around an original point uh, following a Gaussian distribution. So, as we, because we use the Gaussian distribution, we are most likely to have to draw points around uh, the original point, and as we go farther from the, uh, the center of the distribution, we will have less and less points drawn. In this way, we are able to discover the neighbors, the neighborhoods uh, around the points, and in some, somehow, uh, smooth the decisions of the, uh, of the model. Um, the second contribution consists in trying to control this cumulative effect in the uh, neural networks, uh, because what we use at the end, uh, classically at the end of each neuron, um, is this activation function that uh, we return a zero value if the uh, value at the input of the neuron uh, is uh, negative, and we return this, the exact same value if uh, the value is positive. Um, but if you want to control the, um, the amount of perturbation that is um, cum uh, accumulated uh, through the network, we can simply uh, bound the maximal value uh, that uh, a neuron can return, for instance, by this constant t. Um, so let's compare. Um, our, our contributions um, through the state-of-the-art defenses. First of all, uh, con by considering the overhead that is added to the training and prediction phase. So uh, we can say that our model, uh, our contribution don't have much uh, overhead um, uh, at training because we need to train the model only once. Uh, unlike for adversarial training where we need to de train the model twice. Um, and also, um, drawing uh, points following the Gaussian distribution is much uh, cheaper than crafting adversarial tags. Um, also, we don't need to propose the input, we don't need to propose the output. And at the prediction, we don't need to propose the input, we just apply the original uh, examples, and we don't have any lose, uh, or loss in performances. Um, also, our contributors are agnostic, agnostic to the type of attack. Okay, let's see uh, empirically how the contrib our contribution uh, perform. Uh, we tried two different data sets that are classically known in machine, for the machine learning community. Uh, MNIST data set that is um, constituted of uh, images of, of uh, digits, handwritten digits. The task will be to recognize the digit in the image. And also a data set of uh, RGB images uh, for which the task will be to recognize one of the 10 objects that are uh, in the picture. What we train um, are convolution neural networks that are classically used for this kind of task for image recognition tasks. Uh, we consider two different settings the black box one uh, and the black, uh, white box one. For the black box one, the attacker will be, have access only uh, to the inputs and the outputs used for training the model. But for the white box one, we'll have much stronger attacks because the attacker will have access also to the kind of architecture that is used for prediction and to the exact values of the parameters learned during the training. So we'll have access to all the information as possible. The steps will consist in training the model with the different defenses, uh, generate uh, attacks on, against those models with these two different uh, settings, and we'll, also we'll then compare the performances of the different models uh, defended by the different defenses. Uh, first of all, we want to try uh, to see if the resulting um, uh, amount of perturbation that is needed to add to the image uh, has been increased. As a matter of fact, uh, so what we, tra uh, we used is the 10 first images of the data set uh, that are in this uh, green box here. We attack the model uh, without the defenses and with our defenses. 
and uh, with three different attacks. So the code on the left here uh, would be uh, the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the, um, the examples that can fool a model without defenses. And the column on, on the right will be the, uh, the examples, the minimal perturbation will be added to the example, the original one, uh, in order to fool the model train with our defenses. So we can see that uh, at the end, what we obtain when we attack um, our model with our defenses uh, is something that is uh, much more uh, different from the original examples. And so, and it's also much more detectable visually and statistically. So in this sense, we can say that our defenses are better than uh, no defenses. Also, we evaluated uh, another, um, the accuracy of the model, meaning the uh, number of times the model uh, had the, 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 the right um, prediction with presented with um, uh, the examples. We evaluate the accuracy with respect to this uh, epsilon that corresponds to the, uh, the, uh, the budget of the two attacks here. So the budget will mean that um, if you have zero here, no perturbation is added to the pixels of the picture. Uh, and going uh, towards one, uh, well, one, epsilon equal one, we correspond to uh, a switched value for that pixel. So the maximal uh, modification that we can apply to a pixel. Um, our defenses here are represented by uh, these two lines with CNN plus GDA, Gaussian data augmentation with ReLU, ReLU. And we can see that uh, using our defenses, the model is much more robust for these two attacks. And this is for the data set Cypher uh, 10. Uh, sorry. For the black box uh, um, setting, we'll have also um, better um, accuracy than the state of the art. Uh, I'll just try to um, do a short demo and I will then comment on the results. Um, so we have a um, web interface uh, where you could upload photos. And I will explain this right away. So as much as we would like to, um, to show you how to train a model or how to defend it, uh, those are procedures that take uh, a huge amount of, uh, amount of time. What indeed we can show you, on the other hand, is how to craft an uh, adversarial attack, because this is much faster, so it was in the order of a second. So what I did here is uh, uh, to choose a machine learning model. It's a standard model uh, you can find on the internet. Uh, upload an image and then chose here um, the size of a... Um, the budget that we give to the attack as a perturbation. So what we get in the in the end is um, this bird, which is complete correctly classified. I can tell you it's correctly classified. It's a magpie with 91%. Uh, and by applying the noise, which in this case you can see as I put a pretty much uh, a pretty high budget on it, uh, it gets classified as a jigsaw puzzle. Uh, <laughs> the noise that was applied in between is this, and uh, well, you can see just a bit. Here, the, the shape of the, um, of the bird in the noise that was, uh, that was applied. Now, this was the, the FGSM attack, which is one of the fastest one, but you saw come in, uh, in many ways that it took a while to, to get the response. But also what you can see, maybe, is that uh, the change is uh, not too subtle. You kind of can see a background, uh, background of the model here. And what we can also take a look at is uh, what the classification model is um, is focusing on uh, when making the decision. So when making the correct decision, this is the area that interests the model the most. And uh, well, when going for the jigsaw puzzle, it's more this uh, this other area. So in conclusion, uh, we have designed a defense method that is very easy to apply. Uh, you don't need to be a machine learning expert. Um, the functions that we, we have used are uh, available in any machine learning uh, library. Uh, our defense has overall better performance than other defense methods and does not um, add almost any uh, overhead for training and no overhead at all for, uh, for prediction. 
uh, I think more the, the takeaway message for you is that uh, maybe machine learning uh, is not ready at this stage to being applied to, um, to major um, real world applications uh, without the proper security added on top, especially when, uh, when important decisions, say national security or something like that, are, uh, are based on the algorithm. Um, now, the, the demo I have shown you and, um, and the, the experiments were done with uh, our in-house uh, attacks and defenses library, which is uh, soon to be open sourced. And uh, if you're interested in uh, more details about uh, the paper, you have the link uh, over there. So uh, thank you. And uh, if you have any questions, we're ready to take them now. Thank you. Questions? Ah, sorry. So you 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 focus on uh, on uh, uh, upgrading upgra upgrading the samples or changing the samples. Are there any experiment done with uh, uh, changing the model itself, complexifying it? Uh, in order to make it more robust to this kind of uh, perturbation. Okay. Um, so the problem is that making the model more complex would just increase probably uh, the, the problem. We won't solve it. We tried different archi architecture. It has been shown that not only CNN, but also ResNet and other uh, pretty old deep learning architecture are uh, sensitive to these kind of attacks. So what we really no need to study is how uh, we can prevent, maybe in the small units, uh, as we did, uh, or in the training or some other, uh, or for the pre-processing, how we can erase uh, the perturbations or uh, make the model don't account for those perturbations. Um, also, this, has, uh, this is known to be not a specific pro um, problem of uh, deep learning. This is true for all prediction models, and uh, this happens pretty often uh, when the model internally uses a high-dimensional uh, representation space. Now, the high-dimensional space, it's what gives the model its power. So if you have 10,000 different categories of objects, your model is able to recognize them uh, correctly because of those high dimension, in part because of those high dimensions, uh, but it's also what creates the problem of adversarial examples. Hello, uh, can you go to the slide number 30? Yeah, can you explain what happened with number two and number zero? Uh, you see on the third column yeah. number two it has no significant changes in your oh. protected and right. in the fifth column the zero is exactly the same it fall out of the line completely uh, it means that uh, a perturbation that is not uh, visually detectable uh, was enough to fool the model yeah I know uh, but uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. you shown this sign you know uh, the road sign the stop <clears throat> there was a slide with adversarial image yes. and a normal one. So does it mean that uh, your algorithm will not work on some letters, for example? And you cannot protect some road signs with this algorithm just because you cannot? Um, yeah, I would say that so many machine learning is probabilistic. Right? Yeah, <laughs> you are not guaranteed to get the correct response, even if you're not in the case of an attack. Uh, so what you say is true, even uh, when the, the model is protected, even if the defense works well, uh, it's with a probability of min one minus delta, where delta, we hope, is a very small value. So you are right, there will be inputs for which, uh, even with the defense, uh, the model would not be pro uh, projected. So probably someone can craft a specific attack for your algorithm, yeah? Uh, yes. Well, you can always uh, craft a stronger attack. <laughs> oh, that's a good challenge. Other questions? Uh, I have one. Uh, you, in, in, you have some figures based on, uh, um, on tests you did on data set. 
Um, I was wondering, because of the drawings you, you did on the two different types, you know, you have this yellow data set and orange data set, if there, there, are, uh, there is a way to, to some way uh, compute uh, some kind of distance of, of value or error uh, that there is remaining if, with your method? or uh, With our method, it's not possible. Actually, it's not possible anyhow, because it has been shown that as we increase the number of dimensions of the input space, the distances um, lose their significance. So they don't mean anything anymore. So, so it's the a the big problem. So the only way to get some values is by doing tests? Uh, by? Sorry. By doing the tests on data sets? Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you again, and uh, we'll go to the next talk.